Eternal Skywalker says, Hello there, Nooch. So I just unlocked the negotiator. The main thing now is I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> for example, what ships do I want to use for it? What ships to get and how to use it? This would help me with all of the other ships too. Hopefully you take this into consideration and help out with this. Well, greetings and hello there, everybody. It's me, your beloved Star Wars dad, Nooch Too Good. And this question up here... Uh, it, I'm gonna start, by the way, I'm gonna start trying to address more of the questions. I got all these ideas I get on my Discord for ideas for, for videos and everything. I'm gonna start taking a little closer look at that and maybe go directly from those. But this question right here unlocked my brain a little bit and we're gonna talk about this, but we're really gonna talk about it in the context of should you farm the Negotiator or the Malevolence first? Because it's been a question that's been ongoing in this game for a long, long, long time and has had twists and turns and ins and outs. And here you see the Malevolence, the Negotiator. Once you start uh, achieving or getting this Mark II Guild Event token, as you call it, Get Two Currency, uh, you get some of it in Hoth Territory Battles. You get a lot more of it when you start playing Geonosis Territory Battles. And then, of course, above that, you know, you, you get the, you got to be at least Geonosian Territory Battles to start thinking about it. And what I've said for years and years and years and years, and I still stand by it, is before you farm anything else, which would be before you farm Chirotex down here with this Mark II Currency, or Rebel Officer Leia Organa, who now is available in the Guild Event Store, Guild Activity Store. Before you farm any of the other stuff, you need to make sure you got Malevolence and Negotiator at seven stars. Get them to seven stars before you do the other stuff. But which one do you for do first, Malevolence or Negotiator? It's the question that burns in the back of people's minds and has for all eternity. There are new ships out. Here's the uh, the Negotiator. Here's the Malevolence. Which one do we do first? Well, let's talk about the negotiator since it was the, the subject of the question today. Uh, and I click, so the negotiator, it's a great, it's our glass. Why don't I have this upgraded? Let's do that. Yeah, I don't know why I don't have that upgraded. Um, I don't, by the way, I don't do a lot of these first. You guys have noticed this on my streams. I don't upgrade a lot of these first abilities and some of you guys get upset about it. But honestly, I'd have to invest like, I don't know, uh, three, probably like four or five hundred in this to upgrade this one ability. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know how much it costs. Maybe three hundred. But it just, it just doesn't do much for me. It does some damage. I don't use the basic abilities on these ships. I don't use very often. Same with malevolence. I don't use that basic very often. We'll talk about it in a moment. But the other abilities do so much, and they, their refreshes or their cooldowns get them back in the cycle fast enough for me to use them, and hardly ever have to use the, uh, the basic. So anyway. What was I talking about? Negotiator. Your great Capital Republic ship, ship. it goes with Gen uh, General Kenobi. It fuels all your Galactic Republic fleets. The, you know, of course, the Endurance is a, is a pile of garbage. So there's a Negotiator fleet. If we look at what I've got for the fleet here, you know, we, we this is a kind of a classic starting fleet. Anakin, the Y-Wing. This for, a, for years, this was the Houndstooth here in this spot. And then when the Executor came out, that, that went away. It went over the Executor. And the Umbar and Starfighter, Fives is, uh, Fives is ship. With Ahsoka, Plo Koon, Clone Sergeant, and then the Marauder on reinforcement. My Marauder is not quite where it needs to be to be in the starting lineup yet. I've only got a, it's, it's a six-star Marauder. My Bad Batch aren't anything to get excited about or write home about. So, yeah, that's the deal. So there is the Negotiator. Should you do it first before the Malevolence? I don't know. Let's talk about the Malevolence there. And we will talk a little bit more about the Negotiator and how it's beating ships like the Leviathan when you do have a Marauder fully upgraded. So we will talk about that. Here's the Malevolence here. Uh, you can see that really there's only five Separatist uh, ships out there. We, uh, we're Separatists, that's what we're looking for. There are no other Separatist ships. So it's a lot more limited as far as the ships you can farm, what you can put in there, uh, the starting lineup. It just, it brings a lot less, I guess, options to the table as far as fleets and uh, and functionality, you know, as far as, as, I keep saying as far as, I'm gonna stop saying that. But which one of these do you farm first? Do you farm the Negotiator or the Malevolence first? I have generally, I have generally defaulted to the Malevolence over time. And I remember I was talking with somebody, maybe I was talking with Calvin or Sanjita a couple years ago, maybe it's been a while about which one you farm first. And I, I remember I said at the time the Negotiator and they were like, oh, Malevolence, oh, oh. And now I really understand it, guys. First of all, if you just look here at the, at just the, the the amount of farming you have to do uh, there's there's seven ships here there were two more galactic republic ships out there to farm and there's only five separatist separatist ships 
So it's a lot less farming to get to it. You know, the other thing about the malevolence farming, and by the way, if you look at functionality, both of them, you take, if we remove Marauder from the picture, right? If you don't have upgraded Bad Batch, you don't have a seven star Marauder. If we remove Marauder from the picture, and I'm gonna be testing, you can see I'm gonna be testing out seven star Marauder here very, very soon. If you take that out of our, our framework, these two ships with their classic lineups, have very similar functions and very similar uh, results. You know, they, they'll they both beat each other. They'll, they'll counter mirrors. They'll counter each other. They can do, you know, uh, ex uh, the, the Malevolence can actually beat the Executor with some, of the, with some of the right lineups and in some of the right situations. Not always. It's not a just an automatic counter, but it can beat the Executor. The Negotiator really wasn't beating any of the top tier fleets before the Marauder came out. Now, of course, it's competing with, I think, all of them. I don't know about Profundity. I have to take a look at that, but... You know, with the speed on Anakin and Ahsoka, you get them out there first. The Marauder, like, will stealth them. It just, it, now that the Marauder is here, it competes with, I, I, I know Leviathan, I know that Executor, I believe Executor, which is not sure about Profundity, but when you put Marauder in there, great things happen. But, yeah, you gotta have these three Bad Batch, you gotta have them all Relic up there to make it work. So, again, I'll be testing that pretty soon, just so you can watch the channel. Um, But... See, if you get two similar situations, you got you got the Negotiator and the Malevolence, they're two similar situations. Generally speaking, in the game and in life, you want to take the easier path. And yes, I know, the dark side is quicker, easier, and more seductive. And here, the dark side is quicker and easier and more seductive. Let's talk about this. Most players, when you start your game, and this includes uh, maybe some hyperdrive. I think you buy a hyperdrive bundle, it may not include you, but free-to-play players for sure are farming these three Geo ships. It's the best path. The Geo ships are just the best path to be ready for level 78. When you hit level 78, you got those five star ships or better, and you're getting Zetas in the in the ship ability materials challenge. Every, you know, three times a week, you're getting six Zeta mats a week. The Geo ships are the easiest low hanging fruit ships to farm and characters to farm to be ready for. And then, so you gotta farm, you gotta farm three Sunfac, Geo Soldier, and Geo Spy to get your malevolence. And then there's two droid ships that don't require pilots, Vulture Droid and Hyena Bomber. So you're just farming the ships in this case. Now these two are a lot, a lot longer farm. If you did the hyperdrive bundle of the Vulture Droid, you get it at five stars right off the bat, or four stars, right? Oh boy, now I'm not even thinking. It's five stars, isn't it? Hyperdrive bundle, I don't remember now. Oh man, times are changing, man. I'm losing my brain. I think it's five stars. You don't get Hyena Bomber. It's a six month farm if you farm it one note every day. So it takes time to farm it. But if you're sitting there in your lineup and you're using like Executrix or something, you know, you're using the Executrix, which is generally speaking, what you're gonna be using as a new free to play player. You've got the Geo ships upgraded because you're using those free to play. They're easy to farm and get ready for that level 78 Zeta Crunch or Zeta Rush or Zeta Farm. And you got just these two extra droid ships to farm. This is a pretty easy path to having a really good capital ship. And that's why many, 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 many people for years have said the Malevolence is probably the first one you should farm. You get Grievous with your fleet, um, your fleet arena energy too. The Malevolence is the quickest path to having a high level. Obviously, you know, these the Malevolence Negotiator, well, Negotiator is now back to being endgame with the Marauder, but Negotiator without Marauder and Malevolence are not necessarily the endgame fleets now. The endgame fleets are Executor, Leviathan, Profundity, but just, you know, B-tier fleets or a, even A-tier, not, not S-tier, but A-tier, right below that max tier. So generally speaking, we've said farm the Malevolence first because it's just, it's less ships, it's less characters, it's easier farming, it's more seductive, and you get a fleet that can do great things for you, including beating the Executor in certain situations if you get your Geo's Relic. So, and it's just a great fleet to have early on. It can do a lot of work for you in all modes of the game. Now let's talk about the Negotiator. Negotiator, as we've said, if you're gonna farm Marauder, so if you're farming the Bad Batch, you're doing a Lord Vader farm, you wanna get these guys up, and this is Kyrotex, it's, it's just Kyrotex, man. If you're gonna get a seven star tech, a seven star hunter, a seven star hunter, a seven star wrecker in there to get your Marauder up and running, and be beating, you know, the Leviathan Executor in Fleet Arena and out there in, in Grand Arena. Let me get this. Oh, it's dead on. There you go. Dead on. Um, then you got to have a lot of Kyrotech farming. And that's the sacrifice, right? Is farming those Bad Batch. Now, there's free Bad Batch out there right now. So, the Marauder's a little more viable. I believe my buddy Sanjita is doing this farm right now. Because 
the negotiator with the Marauder is a top tier fleet. It's just absolute top tier. Is it going to defend against those fleets? No, not probably not. You can't leave it in there on defense against a Leviathan or Executor. But on offense, you're going to beat them. And it can really serve you well in fleet arena, but you got to farm those bad batch, and that's the big bugaboo. The other part of this is there's only one pilotless ship in here. Anakin, you got to farm Anakin, uh, Jedi Anakin, and the seven star ship. You got to farm fives in the Umbaran Starfighter. You got to farm Ahsoka. And Ahsoka, star, actually, Ahsoka Starfighter is available in the Galactic War Store. It's not all that difficult to farm. This is actually probably the easiest farm out of all these ships to farm. But Clone Sergeant, Plo Koon, Anakin, Umbaran, Bad Batch, these are all really challenging, in long, complete ship farms. And when you look at, at what you do when you farm fives, Fives is a character that goes with gas, right? You know, the 500 first with gas or with a just a clone team with Rex for a while. Anakin is a character that goes with a Padme or with a Qui-Gon Omicron and Grand Arena. Ahsoka is a character that, that goes in those same teams eventually with Jedi Master Kenobi. Plo Koon as a character goes nowhere, does nothing for you. You know, back with the Malevolence, the Geos, uh, the Geos are actually a pretty decent. I, I just got a hold with them in Bronzium 5 in my last round of Grand Arena. So Arena, Arena maybe too. So, uh, Arenia, put Arenia in comments if you made it to this point. Let's hear from you guys out there. Arenia, um, the Clone Sergeant is a great tank. You don't really need him Relic until you get Jedi Master Kenobi, but he comes off the bench as a great tank, but you got to farm him in, in uh, fleet nodes or ship nodes. And Marauder, these are all long ships. It's going to take you a lot longer to farm a full negotiator fleet, and you're going to have to kind of work around and sacrifice some stuff too, like you're not going to get... This isn't one cohesive team. You're farming a Bad Batch team. You're farming a uh, a Padme team. We'll say a Padme team. Maybe even a Qui-Gon Omicron to go along with one of those. You're farming the 501st or a Rex clone. So you got to farm like three set three to four separate teams on this as far as characters. You got you also got a Rex ship. Let's go to those Galactic Republic ships here. You got a Rex ship, Rex right here. You got Jedi Counselor who is used for nothing else and really doesn't even get used in this fleet. I kind, of, I kind of feel like there will be a Galactic Republic, another Galactic Republic capital ship. Maybe it'll be the ship this year because they got a lot of Galactic Republic uh, ships in the game. They could add two or three of them to the game and then have another whole fleet out there basically for another Galactic. I mean, you look at it, you've only got five ships for the for the Separatists. How are you going to add another capital ship for that unless you're just you know, taking Malevolence out of the game? I feel like they need to start adding you know some more Separatist ship for us so they can give us another Separatist capital fleet so anyway these are my two that that's the feedback so malevolence is a quicker easier farm and you may have already farmed the geos and the geo ships to start with if you're a free-to-play player and you got it sitting there and it's it's pretty much ready to go you just got to farm these two droid ships so that's just two extra things to farm on top of the stuff you've already been farming and that's why well i guess you've got to farm grievous too so three extra things to farm but I guess that's why a lot of people default to the Malevolence as the first fleet you get a, between Malevolence and Negotiator, farming and Malevolence first. Now, Negotiator, if you put the Marauder in there with the Bad Batch, it's an end game fleet. So are you going to farm the Marauder? Are you going to farm all these three different teams? Are you going to farm Gas with the 500 first? Are you just going to farm a Rex clone team? Maybe a Rex clones team with Captain Rex mixed in there. That seems to be a pretty good team. Uh, it is a pretty good team in Grand Arena. Maybe you and you got to farm your Padme team along there. So the, the negotiator goes along with the overall like Galactic Republic, Jedi Master Kenobi, Lord Vader theme. Whereas the Malevolence kind of goes on its own theme. It's just Geo, a Geo team with their ships and Grievous. And yeah, you could farm the, the Grievous full droid team to get out their gas, but you don't really have to. You know, you could just farm Grievous by himself and have a level. So that's the trade offs. And you really have to consider that in your game. Are you free to play? Um, is the Malevolence going to be an easier grab for you because you farm those geos already and you can get those those droid ships? Are you are you a little more you know Are you willing to spend some money out there? Are you doing a Jedi Master Kenobi farm? Are you doing a Lord Vader farm? Which generally aren't beginning farms, although I'll be doing it on my new free to play account. Join my Discord. You can vote for what I'm going to be doing on my new free to play account coming here in the next month or so. We're going to get that started up. And are you going to be able to farm the Marauder? Do you have a bunch of Kyrotex? Do you have the uh, capability of farming the Bad Batch, getting, getting them to gear 12 or relic levels with a bunch of Kyrotex out there to make this an end game fleet right off the bat with your Marauder? Because if you do that, Negotiator will be worth it, but you got to consider that all of the multiple teams, the Padme team, the Rex clones team, 
the Bad Batch team. You're farming all sorts of teams to make the negotiator get up and running. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Marauder, easy to get, probably already sitting on your roster, especially if you're free to play. Negotiator, lots of other farms on the side that you're going to have to consider. If you're going for like a Supreme Leader Kylo Ren or a Ray, this is a big side farm. Maybe this is the side farm you pursue that goes along with buying all the Lightspeed bundles. And there you go. Do you pick the Marauder or Malevolence first? I'd say historically we would all say Marauder, or, uh, Malevolence. I said that wrong, by the way. We would all say Malevolence because it's easier to get. Negotiator, more difficult to get, but much better performance in the end game becomes an end game fleet for sure. That's all I got. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Always remember, Nooch too good.